They have there's archaeological archaeological evidence to prove it. But it's not yeah, 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 I never really thought about that. I'll tell you seat the arrow, you hold by your thumb, middle <laughs> finger, these two hold the addle addle. These two hold the arrow and I just kinda use that as a balance. And this uh, this thong thing that you've made is is one piece that has been split in the middle to fit around the Yes it is. And now you were explaining the weight here. <laughs> it's a soapstone, it's a fairly modern edition. I don't think they primitive people did it. Uh-huh. But uh, you can get them with or without. There's a couple different styles of addle addle. And uh, uh, this one I, has a little more that, work. You can get them where they're just one piece of wood with the handle. Uh huh. And this this up here is a piece of what bone or antler actually? Okay. Deer antler. And you used sinew for that for the for the bindings here and there. Yep. And this is buckskin. Yep. Okay. And um, this is a hammer throw, hammer hold, hammer throw, I believe it's Now, did you explain the history to him about that? Yep, they said it's the uh, first uh, weapon pretty much predates the bow and arrow by a few thousand years. Right, uh, you see, and first came the spear. So you had the spear. It. Then came the at, at ladle. Yes. <laughs> Added mechanical lever advantage. That's right. Yeah. Okay. And then, <laughs> then came the bow and arrow, and they figured that the bow and arrow, without technology or communication anywhere, came. Everybody had that technology within 100 years because <laughs> it was so powerful the, around the world. Yeah. And this is more of a plains weapon than a woods weapon. The bow and arrow was more for woods. Yeah. So the way you hold it. It's like that there, just at the bare, bare, barely tip. Not even that far, maybe a two hour drive. Pot of snow on like that. Um, the, the heat is so intense that the first little bit of water that starts to melt is vaporizing as it's hitting the bottom of the pot. You can actually toast your aluminum pot melting snow if, you, if your fire is that hot. So, so just, just a few seconds, just a minute or two. With ginger heat just to get a little moisture in the bottom of the pot and then you can go crazy. And take a little heat. For, uh, for cleaning or for, uh, I guess we need to throw meal on that or? So that was completely <laughs> packed with a shovel and that's how much water you get from it. Not much yield. Now for the coffee, how they've been doing it is filling your pot half full with cold water, putting the grounds in at that time and bringing it to a boil. From the time it comes to a boil, you boil it exactly one minute and then you take it off the flames and let the ground settle. So I'm making a Roycraft pack frame. You need uh, three pieces. These are a little bit bigger than thumb width. Um, and it's shoulder to fingertips in length. And I've taken the fat end on, uh, on each of these longer ones and flattened the, the, the distal end there. You can see, and those will be the uprights, and this is the uh, the bottom cross piece. This one is elbow to finger widths in length, and on the same side, I've flattened the distal oh hand width or so, like that. And now, using a um, constrictor's knot, I'm going to lash these two. Um, pieces flat side to flat side at about this angle and with uh, two fing finger widths of overhang so it's gonna it's gonna look like that first and I think I said the wrong knot I'm actually gonna lash it together with a Canadian jam knot one other thing it makes it easier to tie this and keep things in place if you put a little penny nail in there uh, straight from Morris Kahansky's mouth, uh, nails aren't cheating. So now what I've done is I've crossed those sticks and flattened the inside where they're going to cross and then you want two to three fingers of overlap up here at the top so that you can lash to it. So there's the whole thing tied together. That's just another jam knot up at the top. And now I just need to put some straps on it. We can make these longer if we're towing a toboggan. We can make these higher if we're hanging, you know, uh, an example would be you're hanging bundles of stuff that you're collecting. Sometimes you like to have a high top because it gives you something more to lash to because you're tying on long linear things. Lots of adaptations. We can lash to the frame in any form or fashion, no problem. But to make life easy, sometimes we can put some tie points. It's easy to tie to the three corners, 
but to tie it to the other parts of the frame, you have to dig under your load and, and wrap it around, which is fine. But for the time it takes to do this, if you have this cordage to spare, let's tie a jam knot. Yeah, I haven't tied one of those yet. And then a loop. Doesn't have to be anything fancy. How about a crappy old overhead? We don't care. I'll put that on for decoration. And maybe I want to put one at the center point on this. Again, this is all optional. You do not have to do this. Grant's going to hold his pack up and show you the advanced toggle system. Here we have. So that's kind of cool because you can uh, you can actually have you can actually have the loop loop in the end of a rope and you just hook it over your toggle and then you can just wrap it around another toggle. The toggle can be used a couple of different ways, like a big button almost. Are you going to tell us about the groove that you notched into that uh, this little number here? Oh. Yeah, like... yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Just kidding. Okay, so I got three places roughly midpoint. Okay, don't have to be accurate. Okay, I'm going to load this baby up. Number one, I'm going to show you about uh, three or four different ways to use this thing. So the way we use this puppy is take your cover <coughs> or a blanket or a bag or a poncho or a big coat. You get the picture. Something. Then you stuff your soft items in first. I have a spare coat. Okay, it's not a spare coat. Look what I'm wearing. So I feel for my triangle. Now, just one little safety tip here. Not the way that I've put the uh, the uh, the cross piece on the bottom away from my back. We don't always use the pack that way. I'll show you in the instance where we used it the other way. But this cross piece is away from my back. I'm going to put my soft stuff in the triangle against my back. And I'm going to actually protrude it through a bit. This is how we, one of the ways we can make the pack comfortable. And then everything else can go on top. Let's throw things that I want to have access to, because you can see this, it's not like I can get in and out of this in 30 seconds. So things that I want to have ac easy access to, what I might do is, uh, after I lash it together, I would hang on the outside. An example, that is my teapot. I don't put my teapot in. I hang my, I, after I'm tying it all in, I hang my teapot on the outside. And my cup goes inside the teapot, and that way, if I stop for a tea, I don't have to completely unravel my pack. You got company. Not again. Anytime. Some people would do a much prettier job of me than this. You know. <laughs> 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 no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Come on, everybody, no. laugh. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Yeah, I'm not artistic. <laughs> We're bringing to his knees. Yeah. Oh, look, I got a handy little loop. Now, if I didn't have that, no big deal. I'd just have to work my hand in, work it around the frame. Okay, but the loop just makes life that much easier. Really fun stuff to work with here. Plastic rope. The guy that invented that should make one more piece and shove it up his. No. Okay. <laughs> so where you get the anal part from? <laughs> up the bum. I can not pull it all the way through. I guess. If I want to be cagey. Go so to. Um the end of the course, does somebody win all of Grant's uh, fluffy mates? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we have a raffle, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Silent auction. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it'd be one of those contests though where we don't tell Grant yeah. about it. But hey, by the way, all your stuff. He just goes to go home and he goes, fuck, my truck is light. Jeez. I could have swore I made a thousand pounds of stuff. <laughs> As you're about to see here, no real magic. No fancy cowboy diamond hitch here. I just want to hold my shit on.
plus all that rope's handy to have at least. Oh yeah, absolutely. You're going to use this rope, sure. And you could use uh, shorter pieces rather than... Oh, this conglomeration. Do we have a, you want another rope for the, for the um, straps? There. Pack ready to go. If I had a seat and bag in there, this thing could be mounting out to here and mounting up to here and that. But I mean, this is obviously almost a date pack. The bulge is the important part. The bulge is the all important part. That's good. That controls your. Well, thanks for noticing, Rand. No, not that bulge. <laughs> yeah, the the, uh, the all important bulge. Do you control the comfort of this pack? So the way that we there's a, there's a couple different ways that we can carry this puppy. A rope split in two. Oh, I may be too fat for this. Uh, this ball if you want to yeah, it I'll see. I'll try this one first. The way we pick this up, if it's really heavy, we can actually sit down and lean forward and put it on if it's light. We can hoist it up like this. Around these corners. This rope used to fit around my waist. Uh -oh. <laughs> what kind of knot can I tie here? It's really a constrictor. Square knot. Square knot. Yeah, constrictor. Square knot because it doesn't <laughs> use much rope. If, if I don't have the ends melted, nothing on the ends, it's just extraordinarily easy not to untie. It doesn't use very much rope. Anyway, so that's the pack in its sort of basic naked form. And uh, what I did when I held the fire with my, my uh, sticks over here. Option one. If you have a little extra padding, stuff it under there. All right. Option two. I can see your assistant is cutting some little sticks. This is something that's counterintuitive. But you take a pack that's... Uh, that's, you know, seemingly pretty rustic and remedial. And I've taken it and I've, just by this one little adjustment, I've made it so I can probably carry a load on this thing that I probably may not be able to carry out with a commercial pack. So I'm bridging the distance the, from my fleshy central mammary to the fleshy part of my shoulder and so that the ropes don't dig into my shoulders, right? So, Let me get a picture of that. Yeah, totally counterintuitive, but at the same time, smart. You did it too? Yeah, yeah, yeah. backpacks. Yeah. So you had the, the pike and with the uh the driver in the So an unwieldy box, but still nothing yet. That's a piece of piece of pedal, I guess. I guess I haven't done so bad. <laughs> so I don't have anything soft to push through on my back, right? So in this case, if I if I have somebody to help, if not, what I want to do is I just want to arch my back and I just want to actually stuff something in there. I've used actually, uh, in this case when I had quite a ways to go and something unwieldy to carry, I was digging into my back. So one from this side, one from the other side in my lumbar. And I used a, um, a rotten piece of birch that the birch was still intact but it had the punky wooden side and I actually folded it and put it right through and uh, it was absolutely perfect. What cannot you carry? Nothing. I am a model. <laughs> Show up to the first day of school with this thing, and Garbage can. And Roy well, if you, if you had an old garbage can, I mean, what a perfect pack that is. It's, it's weatherproof. You just take the lid off, throw your shit in and out, right? You know, it's really... Give him a little And there's my uh, finished pack frame, and I've got my rope for my straps and all that ready to go.